Hey guys, here at OSMVTXCruise.com. You're watching our video review of the HTC Arrive. This is a phone on contract with Sprint here in the United States, and it's a 3G-enabled Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. It's actually the US-branded um, version of the HTC, HTC 7 Pro, which is the unlocked GSM version. And the main selling point of this particular Windows Phone is that it offers a sliding QWERTY keyboard, but it also combines a tilting screen, which is um, kind of the design elementation we've seen before on the HTC Tilt from um, the HTC Touch Row 2 and that series of devices that HTC has produced with that tilting screen that's both unique and offers uh, pretty advanced functionality for uh, for users looking for a high productivity tool on the road or even as an entertainment device to watch movies and slideshows and browse the web with a tilted screen by putting it onto a flat surface. Otherwise, the phone itself is a pretty uh, mid-end phone in terms of specs, in terms of uh, smartphones and as a Windows phone too. It's a quite heavy device because of that slide-out QWERTY keyboard. It's still relatively slim, but unfortunately it weighs up to 6.49 ounces, which is um, again quite heavy. The screen itself measures 3.6 inches. It's a capacitive multi-touch enabled touchscreen, but it's a regular TFT display with a 800 by 480 resolution and the um, has a 259 pixel per inch density, which is actually pretty good. Um, as you can see, here, the display itself is bright and vibrant. Unfortunately, though, as a regular TFT screen, it kind of suffers from uh, poor uh, visibility under direct sunlight. So when the light comes out, it becomes more difficult to see, even though the viewing angles are still pretty decent for a non-AMOLED touchscreen here. There is a proximity sensor on this phone, but unfortunately, there is no front-facing camera. So those of you looking for applications like WeChat and Skype will unfortunately not be able to use this phone for video chatting clients um, and uses usages out there. Otherwise, the phone features a 5.0 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash in the back that produces really excellent photos. It has really good autofocus modes and also shoots at 720p HD video, and we'll take, take a look at that in a second. Inside, underneath the hood, we have a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon Scorpion processor with a Adreno 200 graphics uh, chipset. And the most impressive aspect of the phone specs is it has a 16 gigabyte built-in storage, which is pretty big, especially considering this is the only model available here in the United States. So 16 gigabytes as the base model is um, a large amount of memory that will suffice for most users out there. The device, of course, comes with mobile uh, office editing tools like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and also Notes. And of course, you have access to the regular uh, Windows uh, Windows Phone applications, and also you have Telnav GPS for turn-by-turn -turn navigational directions with uh, ATN with Sprint service here in the United States. Um, again, there's GPS, there's Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 2.0, uh, and essentially that's it as far as the built-in um, specs are concerned. Taking a closer look at the design of the phone, we can see we have three standard uh, Windows Phone buttons on the bottom of the device. They are capacitive and backlit, so you will be able to see them even in darker environments. They correspond to the home, uh, the back, and the search keys. Long pressing on the search key will bring up the Bing search icon, and we can go directly and search up uh, different uh, pictures, uh, different keywords, and also from different um, tags and barcodes by pressing the barcode icon there. And also you can search up different tunes by playing back a song, and the phone will recognize that song and give you the art artist name and a biography of the music. There's also a, of course, not holding on the back uh, key, will we'll show you a list of all the different multitasking um, applications that are currently open, so you can go back and forth and swap between currently open applications, so it's a pretty eff effective multitasking tool as well. Unfortunately, unlike some of the more uh, nascent and also short-lasting um, operating systems like Palm OS and BlackBerry OS that we saw. Unfortunately, to close out these applications, you can't just flick them off the screen, so you can only really hop back and forth. Um, closing the applications is more complex and not as user-intuitive. What looks like dual speakers on the front of the phone are really just a microphone on the bottom and a earpiece on the top, unfortunately. There's only one mono speaker located on the back of the unit. The left hand side of the device features a volume rocker that's spacious and easy to press, and also features a micro USB for charging and syncing. The right hand side features a camera shutter key for taking images, and the top of the device features a 3.5mm headphone jack and a power on and off switch that's pretty easy to press. Taking a closer look at the tilting screen and the QWERTY keyboard, it's a very spacious keyboard, one of the best keyboards we've actually tested. Of course, HTC has a long history of producing these QWERTY keyboards, and they all have worked uh, pretty well in the past. The same thing is here. This is essentially the upgraded, more modern version of the keyboard found on the HTC Touch Bro 2, which we absolutely loved. And you can see how the buttons are all super huge. They're island style, they're tactile, they're risen above the surface, they are backlit. Um, there are full uh, five rows here, so you can actually type and have a dedicated number row on the top. And 
And essentially, if you are a rapid texter or someone who cares about, you know, texting and composing long messages or editing office documents, this is definitely one of the phones to check out simply because the keyboard is a lot faster than typing on screen um, for any reason out there, even though Skype is pretty good these days. Now, of course, with Windows uh, 7.5 Mango, unfortunately, not all applications will work in the horizontal view, as you saw there. Opening up the keyboard from the home screen will not ensure that the actual screen will switch that horizontal uh, view, but most applications, such as the web browser and also uh, certain word uh, editing documents, will also flip to that corresponding view because there is an accelerometer, it's just that the software has not been entirely optimized. Taking a closer look there, of course, uh, you have the ability to re rearrange your tiles from the home screen by long pressing on them, and it becomes a pretty intuitive and easy to use uh, aspect. And also you can change the coloring, of course, and the themes, and of course the wallpapers, um, which HTC has preloaded the device with a sense-like uh, wallpaper, but it's not exactly sense on here, uh, which is interesting. And of course, that feature can also be uh, launched by pressing on the HTC Hub icon. The Hub, is, of course, is a special feature found only on most HTC phones. Um, I'm going to just press cancel here, and it's effectively, it's a weather widget that shows off your weather, um, but also shows off some featured applications from HTC. And it's a pretty nice job of uh, playing back your weather using an HTC-style analog clock that we've seen from um, most HTC phones for a long, long time. And also shows an animated version of the weather. For example, if it's raining, you're going to have this windshield wiper going back and forth and if there's fog the screen is going to fog up. The on animations are really cool and they are very vivid and interesting but um, other than really being a weather widget it doesn't really do anything else. Otherwise, of course, you have access to all your games um, by pressing the games icon. You can go back into, of course, the, uh, you can connect with your Windows and Xbox devices uh, in order to play back more games and have game uh, compatibility on this device. But the marketplace is also growing, even though it's not to the uh, extent of, mar of uh, Android's marketplace and also, of course, iOS just yet. You have multiple collection games such as Cat Cut the Ropes, Sonic CD, Plants vs. Zombies. You can get, of course, more games in the regular marketplace and download those uh, correspondingly. Um, of course, you can see a few examples are here. Most games runs pretty smoothly. Um, the one gigahertz processor is on the slower side of the spectrum. Even though Windows Phone is optimized to be run on this processor, um, sometimes we found that if we we're playing extensive games, it required a lot of GPU or even some basic games, um, like the like the logo game that we were actually playing the other day. The phone actually froze up when we had to uninstall the program. So it shows that the performance aspect of the phone could definitely be better if you are a um, rapid gamer. Perhaps you should consider another handheld with a better set of specs on it than the HTC Arrive. Otherwise, again, the marketplace is growing. You can download most productivity tools, and uh, most popular tools are here, and the most popular games can be found here as well. So taking a quick look at the actual camera itself, we can go into uh, that by pressing over here and going into the camera itself, and we can see that the camera is actually a pretty decent camera, like I uh, said before. Um, autofocus is very impressive, and even if you're really close to your subjects, um, the macro and micro shots tend to turn out very nicely, if I can tap on it. Um, images are pretty fast to focus, and the shots are pretty fast to take. You also have GPS tracking on board, so you can have um, notifications of when you took those images and where you took those images on a map, which is pretty important. Sliding up uh, reveals the images that you've taken, and you can cycle through them. Pinch to zoom is a very smooth experience, and overall, it, there's not much lag to it, which we are definitely excited about. Overall, again, the screen is pretty sensitive and easy to operate. As far as uh, phone quality is concerned, it's a pretty good phone on here. Uh, as far as sound quality, Sprint has pretty good coverage here in the Seattle region, and we weren't really, um, never really out of service um, when we were reviewing the handset. And as far as call quality, um, it was pretty good, and our caller said that uh, it was one of the better sounding devices out there. So if you're looking for a great phone, this is definitely one to consider, um, especially in terms of reception. Battery life on this handset is only average. It runs on a battery that's actually been implemented on the HTC Touch Pro 2 that's been aforementioned um, and several other HTC phones. It comes with a 1,200 milliamp hour rating and it lasted us about a day before we had to recharge it. So battery life is on the shorter side of the spectrum and especially if you're considering the phone only has a 3.6 inch screen rather than something that's 4 inches and above. So the last feature that we will be showing you guys today is going to be the web browser on here. Uh, essentially, it's all the applications, as you can see here. And, of course, using the web browser, you just have the native um, access to the... Uh, to the Internet Explorer application, and though it's not as smooth and optimized as some um, other web third-party web browsers you can purchase, it still is pretty responsive and lucid and a huge step up from the past iterations of Internet Explorer we've seen, especially on Windows mobile devices. 
Uh, basically, you just tap on the lower side, uh, uh, on the address bar is now on the lower bar um, of the screen, and it's pretty easy to come up with the virtual keyboard and start typing away. It's a pretty good and pretty accurate virtual keyboard. If you don't plan on using the actual slide-out QWERTY keyboard, it still works equally as well, and there you can see this is the horizontal version. Um, both of them work pretty nicely, and even though it's not like swipe, it still is a pretty uh, responsive and fast way to type out your messages if you don't want to slide out your phone for some quick texting. Um, and overall, if we can take a look at some uh, pages and how fast they load. For example, we can go to Google and we see that uh, you can go and it's searching through Bing, which is a little bit ironic, but you can slide uh, left and right through different screens for different locals, different images, and different web pages and also videos, and then you can easily tap on those pages to load them. So the web browser is pretty fast, even though, um, like we said, the processor isn't the fastest out there, it does a pretty good job of rendering the pages for the mobile versions, and it can even load the full versions if you so do desire um, by selecting that in the settings, for example, on more complex pages such as the New York Times. But that will definitely take more time to load, but it is still pretty uh, responsive respectable, especially if you're over Wi-Fi. And essentially that's it. The HTC Arrive is a pretty good productivity tool like we talked about, especially with that full QWERTY keyboard. It produces pretty decent, uh, a pretty decent experience for typing and sending out messages, text messages, word and editing tools, um, and browsing through web. It all offers a pretty good experience overall. Nothing for the phone really shouts out as uh, something that's too powerful or too particular that stands out from the crowd, but it's a powerful um, all-around smartphone I think will appeal to most consumers out there and even business professionals out there. So uh, a great phone for Sprint and especially for HTC running on, of course, the newer uh, Windows platform. Thanks for watching this video review here at OS and VTXReviews.com. This has been the HTC 7 arrive.